Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's a windy, windy afternoon. It's sunny, but that wind, uh, I have a lot to tell you. First of all, remember when I lost my um, debit card and I went to the bank instead of calling the 1-800 number and remember that wasn't that long ago then I did get the new debit card well I had to go to the pharmacy still going back and forth with the test strip issue and the pen needle issue but it's resolved but um, I went there and I had to pay uh, like four four dollars and sixty cents I got it here for the um, pen needles but before that okay well I'm gonna start over but I'm not gonna shut this off and start over um yesterday one of my endocrinologists, that's the diabetes doctor, one of her PAs called me to try to resolve this ongoing issue. And she put me on hold after I told her everything, even though she could have just read everything on my portal, I had to go through everything. She put me on hold and she called the pharmacy to try to get to the bottom of this. Then she comes back to me and she says, they said that the test strips for a three month supply would be ready tomorrow, which is today. I told her, they told me that on Saturday, that it would be, they would be in on Sunday and they weren't. And then Sunday, they told me they'd be in on Monday and they weren't. And yesterday was Monday and they're telling her they'd be in today. Guess what? They weren't. Um, and she says, they need you to go down there. Something about my part B. Oh, my ears ringing. Part B of my insurance. I says, they have all my insurance information. I was just there last week to get the insulin. Plus, I've been at this same pharmacy 13 years. Well, I thanked her for reaching out because that, you know, was very nice of her to call the pharmacy. And then I went right down to the pharmacy. The pharmacist says, we don't need any of your insurance information. We didn't tell her that. I said, I don't know. That's what she told me. And he says, we won't have the test strip three month supply like the prescription is until tomorrow. I said, well, she did tell me that, but I'm kind of having a hard time believing that you'll have it tomorrow because I've been told this since uh, Saturday, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. I says, um, how about the pen needles? All I have is the insulin. I can't check the sugar. I can't give any insulin. I need the pen needles. And they sent that prescription over. And he looked and he says, okay, we have those. And he says, um, may, let me go check and see if we have one box of test strips. That would be a month supply. Would you be interested in that? I said, I would, please. So then that means if you have it, then today I could test my blood sugar. And so they did have that. And um, so I just had to pay the $4 and something for the pen needles. And I didn't even check to see how many were in the box. I just wanted to get that and get out. Okay, but however, when I was waiting, going through my wallet to take out my insurance cards and my CVS discount card and everything. Lo and behold, I saw that I had with those cards that quote unquote lost debit card. <laughs> oh, I mean, that figures, you know, when you get, you think you lost one and you don't want to spend days looking because, um, 
I really thought that it had fallen out of my hand somewhere and the wind had just taken it off, that uh, taken off with it. That's why I didn't want to spend a lot of time looking for it. As soon as I had searched my car and searched my yard and I didn't see it, I went and I canceled it. Um, now I have it, but of course it's no good, so I'll need to destroy it. But anyway, um, you won't believe what else happened. Um, last night I was so tired and I had a bad migraine. I went to lay down and I thought, I'm just gonna rest my eyes a little bit. My chickens were already put up. You know, my evening chores for the most part were done. I thought, I'm just gonna, and it was so windy out and you know, that wind comes right through into my trailer. I got onto my heavy comforter that um, my friends, it's a husband and wife who are also my subscribers they don't live too far from me, had given me this really nice warm comforter. And um, I got under it and I got toasty warm and I could feel myself drifting off. And I kept telling myself, you got to take your glasses off. You got to take your glasses off. <laughs> um, I fell asleep. I was so warm, cozy. And of course, uh, I had Monster and I had Sadie and Sadie's, you know, she's like a heating pad when she lays up against you and she was up against one of my legs and it felt so good. Well, I fell asleep with my glasses on and I don't know when in the night that they came off. I know I had gotten up twice in the night, you know, for whatever. And I didn't even rem remember that I had fallen asleep with my glasses. And this morning, I'm looking all over for my glasses. I'm looking for where I usually put them. Couldn't find them. I'm thinking, oh, I can't have lost this pair of glasses. What is the eye doctor going to think? I was already thinking ahead, and I hadn't, you know, really looked all over. But I've been so good at putting my glasses and my keys and my wallet in a certain place right when I get into the trailer. I've been so good at this. I was thinking, where are they? And then someone just yelled over there. Then I went to go make the bed. The glasses were in the bed. It is a miracle. Let me tell you, it's a miracle that they didn't get broken. They didn't get bent, you know, with moving around during the night. They didn't get scratched. Um, Oh man, that, that's a miracle. I count it as a miracle. Okay, another thing that happened. <laughs> um, I went out this morning to fill Esther's pool. And you know, I've showed you, there's that uh, faucet that comes up out of the ground in the hose and there's uh, some insulation and then a bucket that, that uh, the landlord's handyman puts over that faucet for the winter time, you know, so it don't freeze. And then an old tire that we lean up against that bucket so that the wind don't blow the bucket off. Um, and the grass there has not been weed eaten yet. So I'm always looking for snakes. And the other day, the landlord's handyman mowed, mowed the grass on the land and the weeds and he weed eaten on the other side of my chicken yard where I had wanted to find out about letting my chickens extend their fence out to that way so that they could eat up those weeds. Well, he weed eated those down. But on this other side of um, the chicken yard where the hose runs over the fence into Esther's pool, <laughs> there's a guy over in that next parking lot. I don't know if he's on the phone or what, but he just keeps yawning really loud. He just did it again. Um, well, the handyman that day when he was mowing, he had gone over to that side and he had cut down some um, branches. It, it comes out to be some kind of tree. I don't know what it is. And I, it makes me nervous every time it starts growing because it grows right up against 
a utility box. And when we get stormy weather, I'm always thinking lightning could hit that and then hit that tree that's growing and start a fire. One time lightning did hit my trailer and it burnt out the, um, oh, what? you know, the trailer had its own air conditioner up in the ceiling. Oh, my nose is itchy. And the lightning hit that, but it hit something else. Not a motherboard, but whatever. So I'm always thinking about that, you know, tree that every year starts growing up against that utility box there. Well, he knows that I get pretty nervous about it. And so I guess he thought before I mentioned anything while he's out there doing yard work, he'd cut those branches and he did. Um, and he left them there on the grass, which is okay because he was really busy. But uh, every time that I go up to Phil Esther's pool, I pick up some of those branches, you know, to get rid of them. I was doing that this morning, but I had my keys in my hand because my plan was that when I'm done filling her pool and I'm done picking up those few big branches, I'm going to um, put my car window down to get fresh air in the car because it wasn't raining. And then, you know, Miss Kitty Cat likes to jump in the car and go on that comforter that I have not gotten to the laundromat yet. So I had the keys in my hand. Well, while I'm, um, I got some of those branches in my hand and I'm walking through that tall grass to go put those branches someplace else. You know, my hands, I don't have no feeling and I dropped the keys. I didn't feel the keys fall out of my hands. I knew that I dropped them because I looked down and I thought, I had keys in my hand. I know that I did. Because I was telling myself, you ought to put those keys in your pocket. And I didn't listen to myself. Drop the keys in that tall grass. I mean, it's gotta be about this tall. And um, I was on my hands and knees praying, God, please don't let there be a snake here. Drive the snakes out and help me find my keys. And I'm going around like this. And I still hadn't found my glasses at this time. So that didn't make it too easy. And I, I just could not find them. I thought this is the time that I need one of those long things that have the magnet on the end, you know, that I could just go through this grass with and it would pick up my keys. Um, I was thinking I'm gonna be out here a good while looking, patting down this grass and I'm ripping up grass and weeds and throwing them in the chicken yard. And I got that hose running, watching that the pool don't overflow. Um, <laughs> it wasn't pretty. And then I thought, I'm going to go get my rake. And I went and got the rake and I started, you know, I thought I'm just going to go in one direction and I'm going to go real slow and I'm going to listen. Of course, you can't listen to nothing when you have a goose except the goose. <laughs> She's, you know, I'm here and the fence is here and Esther's here on the other side of the fence talking to me while I'm raking slowly and trying to listen for keys and also trying to feel when I'm raking because I'm raking up grass, I'm rake, raking up weeds, I'm raking up um, stones, every, everything that I feel, I'm getting down there to look to see if it's keys and it's everything but. Finally, the keys appeared and I, I mean, I could have shouted and danced all around those weeds thanking God that they, that I found them. Could you imagine? Remember that one time I lost my car key and I had to pay for the locksmith to come and it wasn't very affordable and thankfully because it was my first time, um, that company had some kind of special, you know, to try to get a hook in your mouth. Like you really want to have to call them again. <laughs> and um, anyway, I found, but what, what a morning, what a morning, all of that going on. Oh. But the good news is, um, 
I now have the test strips. In fact, I'm going to see how many, um, it should be 30 days, these, these pens. Oh, oh there's a hundred of them. That's more than a month. So I have the test strips, I have the insulin, and I have the pen needles. Now, hopefully, the pharmacist said that the prescription the other day for the test strips was for the wrong meter, which I can't understand. I've had this meter since the end of January or the beginning of February when I was discharged from the hospital. So they know what meter it is. Um, I mean, I don't memorize these things. But I, it's, I mean, it's finally straightened out. But I mean, it has taken way over a week, as you know, if you've been following this pharmacy ordeal. But thank God, you know, uh, Thank God for patience. Now, you know, the Bible says that um, in patience, we possess our soul. You know why? Because people don't have patience, a lot of people, and they start shooting off at the mouth. Uh, tempers get going. Violence. A lot of times there's violence. People lose their lives. Um, it's so important to have patience and long suffering and all the fruit of the spirit. And it's not easy. Now I was being patient and um, you know, you can be patient and long suffering and still be assertive and not be out of control. Self-control is another fruit of the spirit. But I'm thankful that it all worked out. And then also, um, I had an appointment with my endocrinologist on April 3rd. This was made a month ago. And um, last week, or maybe Monday, I went on my portal and I canceled it because I thought it'll be a waste of my time, my gas, her time, and I'll be taking her away from another patient um, for me to go down there when it's been, you know, so many days that I haven't been able to check my sugar. And so I thought, I don't want to take her away from, you know, someone that she really can be helping. So I canceled the appointment. However, the other day, one of her physician's assistants, I've been dealing with about three of them, told me that, um, said, the endocrinologist would still like to see you and so the scheduler will be calling you back before the end of the day they told me that yesterday and the day before and I never got a call back so after all this got straightened out I called back there the doctors and like I've said before you got to go through a call center but I said I'm calling because I want to let the doctor know, let the PAs know that this all got straightened out because she was going to send the prescription over to another pharmacy. But I wanted to know that I have a month's supply of test strips. Supposedly, a three-month supply should be in tomorrow. And I have the pen needles. I got all that today. And I want to leave a message thanking the PA again for reaching out to the pharmacy for me. So after that, she says, anything else I can do? I said, well, uh, I had an appointment on the third that I canceled, but I was told that the endocrinologist still wants to see me. The scheduler was supposed to call back two days ago and then yesterday and didn't. So I don't know if you can help me. She said, I can schedule it. And so I actually, I'm going to see, um, my endocrinologist April 4th so all that worked out so glad that all of this is resolved now something 
very unusual happened. I'm forgetting what what day. Do you know that um, this morning I thought today was Saturday and it's Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I thought it was Saturday. Um, somehow I've got my days all mixed up. I should know what day it is and I should know it's not Saturday because I just taught Sunday school this past Sunday. Um, but something happened a few evenings ago. I was driving. Actually, I was driving. I was leaving Walmart. And I was on the road behind Walmart that goes out to the lake, but I wasn't going to the lake. It was evening. The sun was setting. I was going home. But I saw... Um, I saw someone from the back with a backpack on and really limping and kind of even dragging the leg. I couldn't tell if it was a guy or a girl from the back. And um, I don't know, be, you know, besides how the person was walking that got my attention, I started to, I, I don't know how to explain it. I started to feel bad for the person because, um, well, there's times that I have what they call a club foot. I mean, it's been a long time, but there was a time when it was just almost constant. And it has to, for me, it has to do with the spinal cord disease. And it was always be my left foot and then up into my leg where I would be walking and I'd have to actually just drag that foot and drag that leg. It was pretty constant for a long time and I don't know if God has healed me completely from it. I just know it's been a long time since I've had that issue. But the neurologist at that time told me uh, it's called club foot and it's part of the syringomyelia. Anyway, uh, and I think because of my training of working in the medical field years before, um, when I see people and I observe something, I pick up on things right away, especially, you know, that uh, person walking like that. So uh, I turned around and headed toward the person and got near and I put my window down, that window halfway down and found out it was a young guy and I said, I noticed you're limping. Are you okay? Now I was in a very safe place. Walmart's there. The police station is right next to Walmart. Uh, there's a fuel city. There's houses. There's a big water department with a security guard out there. So I, I would never put myself, you know, in a bad position. I'm, I'm pretty street smart. I'm from the city originally. Um, and so I said that to him and he um, he went to say something to me and I picked up right away, he's deaf. So he had his phone and he puts on his phone, I'm deaf and I've been walking two days. He held up his phone there. So I don't know sign language and um, you know, I was hoping he could read lips. So I asked him, I uh, said, where are you going? And then he hands me his phone in motions for me to type. So I typed that in the phone. Where are you going? Um, he said to Connecticut. Well, he's heading the wrong way. <laughs> um, and I said, he gave me back his phone. I said, you're heading the wrong way. You're heading to the lake. The direction that you're going, there's nothing but lake. And um, he said, then I said, and so what about your foot? And he texted back, said uh, his feet had were hurting. And um, then gave me back his phone. And I said, do you have blisters? Can I 
go I can go to Walmart I can buy you um, some band-aids and some ointment and I uh, gave him back his phone and he said he didn't have blisters and um, we were going back and forth like that you know he didn't get in my car didn't let him in but just with the window down handed me back and forth the phone and uh, you know I said do you need me to or do you want me to take you to the police station right there for help um, do you want me to stay here with you and call the police uh, I really didn't know what to do I told him you know, going back and forth on the phone, you need to go to Garland to, um, he was looking for a bus or train or a bicycle. I said, I don't have a bicycle and Wiley has no taxis, no bus, no train. You need to go to Garland for that, which is another direction. And um, I put on his phone, you know, the police, probably would take him right into Garland or they would go down the road right to the Garland line and the Garland police could get him there and then take him to the bus station. I don't, I kind of know where the bus station is, but I'm not sure. And I mean, I wasn't going to take him either because I don't know him and he had a backpack, you know, um, besides having weapons, maybe he could have drugs on him. I don't know. And what if I were to get pulled over for anything? And I mean, I am pretty wise about things like that, but I, I would not mind staying there with him, with him waiting on the outside of my car if he wanted me to call the police because I could tell the police that I just saw him walking and noticed him limping really bad and I was just concerned about his foot. Um, I didn't see him running from anyone's house or jump out of a car. You know, I wouldn't want him to get accused of something. It's just a situation, but I, I would have felt so bad uh, if I had seen him and I had just completely ignored him. You know, I wouldn't have, that would have been on my mind. So anyway, I'm glad that I stopped. I offered to do what I could do and I didn't have no cash on me, you know. Um, I did offer also in that conversation going back and forth. Um, I said, if you'd like to wait here or I'll go back, I'll turn around, go back to Walmart and you could follow me there, but your foot, so it'd be better if you just sat here and I pointed actually across the street to where the security guard um, was at the water department. I'm sure he would have let him sit there with him. And I said, I'll go in Walmart and I'll get you um, water or juice or um, some crackers and apple. You know, I'm thinking of things like that um, because I don't have no cash on me, but I could, you know, get you those things. And he said, no. And he didn't ask for any money. And um, he asked if I had a bicycle and I said, I don't. And I was just, um, so we went back and forth and when I uh, felt like I had done all I really could do, I told him, um, I said, I'll be praying for you. In fact, can I pray for you now before I leave? And he said, no. But he can't stop me from praying when I left him. And I did pray for him and I've been praying for him. And um, I thought, oh God, please don't let him be so desperate that he'll see a bicycle on someone's porch or up against someone's house and he'll go to take it and he's deaf and he can't hear if they have a dog or he can't hear if they're yelling at him. Um, and you know, people here, they take things like that very serious and a lot of people have guns and shoot off guns and I don't want to get into all that, but it can get really out of hand, you know, especially if 
they don't know that he's deaf and they're yelling, hey, stop, hey, drop the bike, you know, and he don't. And um, and then I thought, oh God, he's, he's just walking aimlessly out towards the lake. God, please don't let him be so desperate that you know what I mean. And um, well, I was looking to see if there was a cop. I wasn't going to bother the security guard with it, but I was looking to see if there was a cop around. Sometimes there's a cop in those parking lots to catch people speeding, and there wasn't. And so I did call the police. I called the non-emergency number and uh, I told the lady what he was wearing, what direction he was going to, how badly he was walking, and that he's deaf. And I told her I didn't feel threatened by him. He was very polite and he never asked for money. He um didn't even ask for a ride when I think about it. He asked if I had a bicycle. Um, so I don't know. But later on that night, we got a lot of rain and I was just praying that he found shelter somewhere. Um, I did tell him, when I told him, you're heading the wrong direction to Connecticut and to Garland. The way you're heading is just to the lake. He um, brought up the street on his phone. So somewhere along his walking, he found the um, name of that road and he brought it up on his phone and was making it large for me to see. And he was, you could see on the map there, you know, the body of water, the lake, and he pointed and I said, that's that's where you're heading. But I told him that there's an RV park right there. And um, you don't have to have an RV to spend the night there. You just have to have money. People sleep there in tents. People sleep there on picnic tables, on the ground if it's, you know, summer. Um, but they do charge you. And I told him that, and uh, I did tell him maybe they would just let him in there for the night and he could sleep on a picnic table. I told him don't sleep on the ground because there's coyotes and snakes. But um, if they'd let him in, if he'd explain, maybe they would, um, maybe they had an extra tent even. So, I was also thinking, you know, I was weighing it all out once I turned around and I was heading home. I was thinking, I wonder if he doesn't have friends. He told me he was 21. I don't know. He looked, he looked it. Um, wonder if he has friends or maybe some family that's staying in that park. And maybe they had an argument and he, and he left and now he's, wanting to go back because it it was just odd to me that he knew the name of that road and he seemed to know that the lake was there. I didn't know. I was trying to figure it all out and sometimes you can't figure things out. <laughs> also, if he would have gone there, they have um, watchmen at the gates of that RV park and they would have called the police also especially since he's handicapped uh, deaf and that would have been two of us that had called and that would have got the police attention even if they would put him in jail for the night but not write it up so that it's anything on his record you know for safety they put him in I, I just don't know I don't know, but I felt like I did what I could do and I've still been praying for him. Maybe I'll see him around town. I don't know. I don't, I told him Connecticut is very far away. And of course I didn't say, why are you going there? Are you from there? I didn't want to get into all of that. I was 
in the moment, like crisis mode, trying to figure out what I can do to help. And I, I offered everything that I could do. So, I mean, we just never know. Um, on my way home, I said, oh God, thank you for my hearing. Thank you for my vision. You know, I had that um, spinal meningitis back in 2014. And I know someone younger than me, but um, came down with spinal meningitis and he lost his hearing. And I think part of his vision but I know he lost his hair. He heard before he got spinal meningitis, but once he got it, he did lose his hearing. And um, that does happen. And oh, God just is just so merciful, isn't he? I think these guys are looking for, what are those things called? Uh, irrigation. That's a big problem down here in Texas. When we get a lot of rain, people's um, lawns in front of their house and businesses, like that's a restaurant there, they have a lot of trouble with the irrigation things. I know someone, I know two people that are into that business and they get called out all the time to go out into people's yards and businesses' yards and they have to dig up that thing and um, I guess irrigated out. I don't understand it all, but I know it happens every time we get lots of rain like we've been having. But people here better be thankful for every drop of that rain because we know how these summers are. Are you still here? Oh. Oh, yeah, you are. Whew. Yep, that's what they're doing. They got the shovels and they got the uh, pump thing the long hose. One person I know was working for a landscaping company. Actually, his brother owns the company. Two of his brothers do. And he's been working for his two brothers since he was a teenager. Now he's maybe almost 30 and married and has two kids or three kids, but I've known him since he was a teenager. Um, now he's done really well. He's, he, uh, was doing all that landscaping work for his brothers and then started taking courses in irrigation and he has started his own business. I think it's just him and another guy right now, but he is business minded and I'm sure his two brothers who are entrepreneurs will, will help him. But, um, that is a good business for him here. I don't know if I can show you. Let's see if you can see. Mm. Can you see them there? No. Oh, right there. Can you see them? Uh, two guys. And he's pumping something he just started. Yep. There's those two guys, but there's two more on this end. It's like they have a irrigation crew. Well, I guess I'm going to go home. But thank God that that's settled. Yeah, that was a lot to tell you, huh? Okay, I'll talk to you later.